graders, this is, um, you only have about 60 days left of your middle school career, and then we're going to pass you off to Miss Spade and some amazing high school teachers at Comstock High School, and then um, four years from now, you are going to find yourself back in this auditorium and talking about your plans, your post-secondary plans and graduation plans, and that's, just let that sink in for a second. Right? That's pretty pretty exciting time to be an eighth grader, finishing out your middle school career, getting ready to embark on a really exciting four years in high school at Comstock High School, and we've got a ton of information to share with you tonight. And so, like I said, I'm Mr. Chop, the principal of STEM Academy, Mr. Wilkie, the principal of middle school, and Ms. Spade, the principal of the high school. And so I'm going to pass it off to Ms. Spade. We're going to pass the mic around. There'll be time for question and answer. At the end, we'll invite everybody to the Colt Center. You can meet with teachers, you can meet with students, um, ask any questions. Um, this is a, it's a time, a night dedicated to giving you information and getting you excited about, about high school. So here is Ms. Spade, the principal of Comstock High School. Thank you, Mr. Chop. Welcome, everybody. We're excited to have you come to the high school in, what did you say, 60 days? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. A couple of things I'm going to talk about, just touch on real quick, because then teachers and our student services team will talk a little bit more. We have a registration day in August, and you want to make a point to get there, because at registration day, you'll take your student picture, you'll get your schedule, and you'll get your lacquer assignment. And Good news, next year we will have new and improved lacquers. This year our lacquers are very small and it's the biggest complaint of our students right now. So next year you'll have those bigger lacquers. Parents in our classrooms, we have a lot of supports and in our school we have a lot of supports that will help your students improve, improve and get the help that they need academically for their success. Many of our teachers have been at the high school for numerous years, and several of them are here tonight, which is a support in itself because when teachers are invested in the school, it shows with their relationships with the kids. We have an amazing student services team. They're called the heartbeat of our high school. You'll meet them tonight, and they are all here. We offer one lunch at the high school, which is new this year, and the kids, they really seem to like it. The teachers seem to like it, so all the teachers get to eat at one time, and the students get to eat at one time. We also open the gym up, so it's kind of a playtime, recess time for high school kids, and that's gone over well, too. Next year, we will have a school resource officer, and we will share that officer with the middle school, and that's always been a positive experience at any of the schools I've worked at, where the, the officer builds good relationships with the kids. Parents will have four parent-teacher conferences throughout the year, one for every marking period, which is, helps you stay on top of your child's grades, and your ability to communicate with their teachers. If you have any questions about what's happening in school, the handbook is on our website. Comstock's website, website is very impressive. There's a lot of information on there and it's easy to find. So make sure that you are checking out the website when you can. Students, good attendance equals good grades. So we, we really stress getting to, to school because when you're here, you're getting the instruction and your grades will reflect that. And last, couple of last things here, get involved. Parents, if you wanna be involved, please call the office, we'll get you involved. I know my voice just cracked, I saw you laughing at me. Um, so, Get involved. Students get involved. We have a lot of activities. You'll learn about them tonight. That's what makes high school fun. You have four years, so make the most of it. 
and we are all here to help your students succeed and we are really looking forward to having them at the high school parents we especially want to thank you for coming out tonight and investing your time in your child's education so thank you so much all right now's the time to take out your phone um, capture that that QR code because this will give you access to the Google document our, our digital agenda that includes hyperlinks that we will be going through tonight um, throughout our presentation so I'll wait till I see phones go down if you after you capture the QR code for the information night documents and then we'll also share out the presentation and the agenda um, through ShoutPoint Messenger after the presentation is done along with the video. And so I would like to introduce Ms. Polson. Ms. Polson is the academic coach two days a week at the, at the STEM Academy and she is three days a week at Comstock High School. Hi everybody, we are super excited to have you guys, um, and I'm going to be throwing a ton of information at you um, that will be more for kind of your all four years of your career, uh, But so don't get over too overwhelmed. We will be talking to you guys about this your entire high school career. Um, so each one of you is going to have a four-year plan. Um, we'll, we'll meet with you and go over that either um, before this, this year ends or at the beginning of the school year. Um, it'll kind of go over all of the classes that you need to take. You need to take four years of math, you need to take four years of English, you need three years of science, and you need three years of social studies. And then we have all kinds of electives for you to choose, we have different pathways for you to choose that we'll go over a little bit. Um, so there are some different diploma options. Again, this is not a decision you need to make tonight or even your freshman year, but we just want to talk to you a little bit about some different options. Um, so there is, uh, we talk about MMC uh, curriculum, which is basically the state's requirements. There are 18 credits that you're required to get to, in order to get a state diploma. In order to get a ComStock diploma, you need to have three additional elective choices. Um, and those will be things like art or um, tech ed or just some different options that you can kind of choose from. Um, we also have a STEM endorsement, which is exactly what it, it means. You need to take three, elect or three classes that have science, math, or engineering involved in them. Uh, we have a seal of biliteracy. Uh, we offer Spanish at the high school. And you need to pass, there's a test that you will take um, after you take Spanish too. And if you pass that test, we can give you a seal of biliteracy. Uh, we also have something called early middle college, which uh, Mr. Cotter will be up here shortly to talk to you guys about. But that is a five-year program. Uh, you spend basically three years at the high school getting all your high school credits, and then your last two years you're at uh, community college working on that. And when you are finished with that fifth year, you will walk away with a high school diploma and also an associate's degree. Um, and then we also have honors programs, which if you, we have some, we offer some honors classes here. Um, also AP classes, which are called advanced placement classes, which you can also earn college degree or college credits in. Um, and so if you take some of those classes, we can also give you an honors endorsement as well. And then again, there's that traditional Comstock High School diploma with it that is 21 credits. Okay. Um, we passed out some of the, the updated um, course catalog for you guys for 23-24, um, so feel free to look through that. This is also will be on the website. Um, right now, the 22-23 is linked, but I will update that after the presentation with the 23-24. Okay, and then we have um, a couple of teachers from our special education department up here to discuss their programs. Um, Ms. Natalie Hasbeen and Ms. Emily Kellerman. Okay, so my name is Natalie Hasbeen and I am one of the special education teachers here at the high school. And in my program, I teach in the functional classroom. And in our classroom, we focus on life skills for functional independence, volunteer opportunities. So some of the students might go to the dog dive um, and actually work with a teacher that used to be here many years ago, Beth Yurick. And then we also have work-based learning opportunities for our students as well. And we focus on daily living skills, personal financial literacy, and we also um, focus on, oh, there was something else. I don't remember. But um, we do a lot of fun things in our room and work towards functional independence. I'm Emily Kellerman. I am one of the resource room teachers. Um, so for students with an IEP, you may, I mean, even if you're a general student, 
Um, I coach <coughs> in math classes, so you may see me in one of your math classes. We also have a teacher who specializes in English, and she'll be in some of your English classes. Um, and then another who kind of shares science and social studies. So you may have, see a co-teacher in some of your classes. Um, I also have an academic skills class, so this would be available for students with an IEP, so they have kind of built-in extra time and support for their classes. And students with IEPs still, they graduate with a diploma. Um, we may replace a class with something else that gives credits to the same thing. That would be that personal curriculum. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I will say there is, um, with the functional program, it, you are uh, earning a certificate of completion or a certificate of attendance. So students in our program will um, usually move on to another um, educational facility to continue their education up to the age of 26. So they will receive a certificate of attendance so that they can continue their education. Otherwise, they earn a certificate of um, completion. All right, thank you so much. And next I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Hamilton from the high school. And Mr. Hamilton's gonna come down here and talk a little bit about 504 accommodations and supports. So without further ado, here is Mr. Hamilton. How's everybody doing? You gotta wake up. How's everybody doing? Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm Mr. Hamilton. I'm the behavioral interventionist at the high school. I'm also the 504 coordinator. Um, so in terms of 504s, 504 plans are just a, a plan of list of accommodations to help your child have an equal access to education. That's all it is. Um, so if you have any questions about 504s, don't hesitate to reach out to the high school. Um, for your child to qualify for a 504 plan, um, he or she must have a physical or mental impairment that substantially limit their access to education. So if you have questions and you're wondering about, oh, I wonder if this disability might qualify, you can reach out to your current uh, principal, guidance counselor, or you can call the high school and I have no problems meeting with you and discussing what those options are for your child. Um, we have several students with 504 plans. Uh, some of the examples of those accommodations are like extended time on maybe like a test or quiz, um, extended time on large assignments. So, and there's a, a, a list and an array of accommodations that we provide for students to help level the playing field. So if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks Mr. Hamilton. I'm gonna talk a, for the next three slides. The first slide is on weighted grades. And so um, as you start taking high school classes, they show up on your high school transcript that colleges will see. And certain classes, to encourage you to take difficult classes, will obtain a weight. And a weight means if you take a ATIP class or an AP class or an honors class, um, that if you earn a B in that class on your transcript, it'll show up as, as an A. If you do not pass the class, it doesn't automatically allow you to pass the class, and you still would um, not obtain a passing grade, but if you earn a B, it becomes an A, a C becomes a B. So weighted um, grades uh, are helpful to get a good GPA and get into um, schools after, your, after four years of high school. Yeah. Some of the classes also would include dual enrollment, or classes taken at the Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center. Kalamazoo Area Math and Science Center, or CAMZ for short, is available for students um, at, they can apply in eighth grade for ninth and 10th grade, or you can apply as a ninth grader for 10th grade or a 10th grader for 11th grade, though that's less, less common. CAMZ is a countywide program where ninth and 10th graders go for math and science classes, math, science, and computer classes in the morning, and 11th and 12th graders go for math, science, and computer classes in the afternoon. And so the Comstock High School would work with you with your schedule. The classes, the non-math, science, and computer classes would be taken at your, at your home high school. 
So you can still participate in band with Mr. Bird, you can still participate in athletics, um, but it's just a little bit of um, figuring with his schedule because you're gonna be in two separate locations. We'll talk to you a little bit more about other options where you are at the high school part-time, but learning in different locations, um, like the Academically Talented Youth Play Program or dual enrollment or early middle college. The Academically Talented Youth Program is not only a program for accelerated math and English, it is also one of the only places in the county that you can take AP Computer Science. And so students do not have to be accepted into the Academically Talented Youth Program at Western in order to enroll in AP Computer Science. So if you're really into computer science, even if you're not an ATIP, then you're able to participate in APCS. Um, through the Academically Talented Youth Program. For students that are in the Academically Talented Youth Program, um, they are oftentimes taking two classes in, a, in um, two years of high school English, for example, or two years of high school math in, in one year, and those classes are weighted towards your GPA. And so if you get a C in that class, it will show up on your transcript as, as a B. Another option that um, is this one mine or is this one Mr. Cotter's? I'm gonna take over on this one if that's all right. Awesome. I'm all right. gonna I, now introduce you. Mr. Cotter. Hey, thank you so much, Mr. Jop. I'm gonna try to bypass the microphone. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, sounds good. So, Mr. Jop, kind of touch on some of those weighted uh, grade opportunities, some of those, um, you know, uh, advanced level type classes. One of those options that we have here at Comstock High School, high school as Mr. Jop mentioned, was the advanced place, AP courses. Um, AP is a phenomenal way to boost some of the academic rigor while being involved with, with our wonderful teachers here at Comstock High School. All these AP courses are taught by our very own Comstock High School teachers. Uh, it's a great way to, to be able to kind of uh, take that next step with, with academic challenges. Uh, as you'll see here, we have uh, every year we offer AP U.S. History. Um, on a varying year-to-year -year scale, we'll have AP Calculus and AP Physics. Uh, this year, we have actually back-to-back -back years, we've been able to offer uh, AP Government uh, and Politics, and then uh, AP Biology seems like an, an, annual, uh, an annual standing here at the high school. So these AP classes, they're year-round classes. At the conclusion of this class, you have the opportunity to take an AP exam. That AP exam, um, based on a score of five, uh, and and any, most colleges will accept uh, a range of anywhere from three to five on the exam for some uh, college credit. Sometimes some of those more highly selective institutions are going to want to see a five, maybe a four. Some of your in-state institutions may take a three. Um, and if you earn those scores in the AP exam after the culmination of the class, then you can take that college credit with you at no cost to you. So again, AP is, a, is an awesome opportunity to uh, really dive into some academic rigor with our teachers here at Comstock High School. What am I talking about next? Wait, did you say no cost? At no cost, Mr. Chop. Well, there's $5 cost to take the exam, so I kind of lied. But five bucks is a lot better than, than forking out the tuition uh, for, for what that college credit would cost you. So I am the post-secondary dean here. What does that mean? I help students with their transition out of high school. My main caseload uh, are seniors each and every year, making sure everybody has a well-developed post-secondary plan, but I work with all grade levels. It's never too early to start planning. If you want to talk tonight about your post-secondary plan, I'm happy to do so. Maybe you're not quite sure what post-secondary means. It means after high school. We value our students who go on and pursue um, an opportunity within the skilled trade just as we would our four-year institution students, our two-year institution students. College can mean a wide variety of things. There's not one right path. And what I think this, 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 this school does such a good job of is making sure that you have a ample opportunities to be able to explore what your path is and what is your best fit. We're not going to try to help, you know, make you just fit some sort of mold. We want to be able to take um, your interests and your abilities and, and, and your hopes and your dreams and be able to make sure when you do walk out of these doors the last time as a student that you have a, a plan that you're ready to transition into. Um, so that is my job. A lot of opportunities for college rep visits every fall. We've got about 30 college institutions coming in our doors and talking to our students every single day about what does it take to be a student on our campus? What does it take to be admitted to our college? How are you going to pay for tuition and room and board? And do we have your major? 
those really, really important things that um, when we're talking about where do we fit best if a university or a two-year college is our plan, uh, how do you decide? And we've got people who um, review, literally review your applications for acceptance to come in and talk to you about what you need to do. Those open to all grades, you can start as soon as your first day of ninth grade to attend those meetings. We also get an, uh, into some career facilities. We've got a couple really great job placement programs and mentorship programs that you're going to learn about. I'm not going to take too much time to talk about that tonight. Um, but if your if your hope if uh, if your desire after high school is getting straight into work, we've got some great partnerships with some local employers. Um, you see a picture up there. It's decision day. Uh, in about five years' time, you're going to come up on this stage and you're going to announce what your plan for after high school is. It's a really special day for those of you who may follow college athletics and big time recruits say, "I'm going to go play." for this college, we do that only for every single student, every single graduating senior. Your opportunity to announce your plan, but most importantly, your three years as a freshman, sophomore, and junior, you're gonna be able to see every senior class, what they go on to do, and hopefully be able to learn a thing or two from their plans. Dual enrollment is another opportunity that Mr. Chapman addressed the way to grades. It's also an opportunity to earn college credit. We have a really robust dual enrollment presence here on our campus. Dual enrollment is similar to early middle college that we're going to hear about in the sense that it's an opportunity to earn free college credit while in high school. Free college credit while in high school. We are able to pay pretty much the entirety, uh, actually the entirety of tuition at KBCC for your classes um, that, 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 that you choose to enroll in. Now there is some very specific steps in this process. Usually this becomes open the junior year. There have been some instances sophomore year where this happens. Essentially what happens is you apply to Kalamazoo Valley Community College, you're accepted. You take a placement test, we assess those scores, and we see what you place into. Then we try to see, uh, do these classes fit within your graduation track? Do they fit within your schedule? Do you have reliable transportation? Things of that nature. If you don't have reliable transportation, we try to mitigate that issue. We hold anywhere from one to three college classes on our campus each and every semester. So you do not have to worry about getting out to campus. These are classes taught by KBCC faculty. They are college credit. And the best part is, is that all of these classes are taken from something called the Michigan Transfer Agreement. The most highly transferable classes that KBCC has to offer. They transfer to almost every in-state institution and a ton of out-of-state institutions. We try to assess that if you're getting into a dual enrolled class, it's going to follow you and save you time and money for the college that you're looking to attend. Uh, just from this, this past semester alone, to kind of give you an idea of how robust this is, our, our students earn 311 college credits. It's a value of, of, of roughly $40,000 that they pay zero for, um, and they're able to earn about a 3.0 average in these college classes. Again, that's a weighted grade. So really, um, these students, if they did earn a 3.0, it is a 4.0. If they earned a 4.0, it's a 5.0. Um, so AP, dual enrollment, wonderful opportunities to not only lose GPA, but to save yourself time and money for the next level. Early middle college, similar but different. Early middle college, as you heard from Ms. Polson, who, who touched on it, uh, it includes a fifth year of high school, uh, a 13th year. Um, but what that, that last year is it's fully out on college campus. You begin taking college classes as a junior. You, you, you ramp up that course load as a senior, and in your 13th year, you're a full-time college student. The idea is by the time that you graduate your 13th year, not only do you have a high school diploma, but you have either an associate's degree or some sort of credential from Kalamazoo Valley Community College um, at no cost to you or your family. Um, it's a very specific, very direct program. I would say that it's certainly not for everyone. If your idea is just to try to get some college credit, probably not the track. But if you know for sure that you want to earn a certificate of achievement in welding, or you want to earn an associate's of a business administration transfer to Western, this is that, that really pointed program that you're going to be looking at. Um, again, nothing you have to make a decision on tonight, but a great opportunity to consider. Um, when you do check out the slideshow, there's a short video um, in the bottom right corner. If any of you know Maya, unfortunately she's not in this video because that picture's from last year's video. We have an updated video, just talks a little bit more about early middle college. If you're interested, I encourage you to check that out. CT and EFA. Um, Another phenomenal opportunity for you to prepare for your future. CT is career and technical education. EFA is education for the arts. These are countywide programs that you get to take with students from across the county um, that, that may uh, be courses that we can't necessarily offer right here in-house. 
Career and technical education is a phenomenal way to build your resume, to earn some credentials and some certifications in the field that you want to go into. So if you know that you want to pursue a registered apprenticeship in the skilled trade of welding, we're going to try to make sure that you're in the welding course for your senior year. If you want to go into HVAC, or you want to go into nursing, or you want to go uh, become a teacher, these are all CTE classes that are available to students across the county. The incredible aspect about your position that you're in, <coughs> excuse me, is that in the fall of 2025, the brand new CT center is opening up right across, uh, right across, uh, right down Sprinkle Road, right, right off of the highway there. Uh, this is a state-of-the-art building, um, an incredible event investment that, that the area has made um, for the future of the workforce, and it's an opportunity that you guys, that, that you all are going to be able uh, to participate in if CTE is the route for you. This is, uh, it's a pretty special opportunity. There in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a rendering of what the inside of the building is, is going to look like. The reason this is so important is because CTE classes for many years have been held at different locations across this entire, entire county. Having it in one central location is going to make this incredibly accessible, and the best part is, is we are the closest district to this building. It's an incredible opportunity that we have, and, and, and something that is, is a special part about uh, being a student at Comstock High School. Um, usually, you're applying. Go ahead. I was going to say, add on to that. With the new CTE Center, is a revisioning of what CTE for the for the future looks like. So they're expanding their offerings from not just welding and auto tech and HVAC, like Mr. Cotter mentioned, but saying what are the high skill, high demand jobs of the future and looking at things like cybersecurity and other options. So expanding the course offerings uh, that CTE is, is. It's also a really amazing gift in Kalamazoo County because this was made possible with a anonymous $100 million donation to, to fund the, the creation of this center. It's a pretty, pretty cool opportunity. Thanks, Mr. Chapman. Uh, biggest part about any of these opportunities that I've just highlighted, it is only available to you if you're staying on track for graduation, if you have the room in your schedule. Without that on-track path, without being able to be um, in good standing with your credits, with your grades, this will not be an opportunity that you have for yourself. So when we talk about the transition to high school, it is a little different than middle school. I mean, every single class um, will determine if you go on to that next phase or not. If you fail a class in high school, you take it again. That's the spot in your schedule for the next semester that makes your path to these types of opportunities in your junior and senior year a little bit tighter. So when you walk in first day, make sure, I mean, we're hitting the ground running, and, and if, if these are things that are catching your eye, these opportunities, it all starts, well, Starts today. It's been, it's been started. So make sure um, if you're planning for this, got to have the room in your schedule. What kind of things are offered through Education for the, for the Arts? Thank you for that, Mr. Chop. Education for the Arts kind of supplements uh, some, uh, some art opportunities. We, we do have art here. We have three hours of art that's taught. But if you're somebody who wants to go beyond that, maybe you're interested in digital uh, photo art. Maybe you're somebody who's interested in theater and improv or musical performance. These are all EFA classes that, similar to CT, are countywide programs that you can enroll in um, that, that, that gives you an opportunity to be in academic settings, to be in, in, in settings you're passionate about that maybe we can't fully offer here. Um, so uh, these are clickable links where it says career technical education, education for the arts. I encourage you to check that out. You'll see all the course offerings. If you ever want to talk more specifically about any of these programs, happy to do so at any time. No, it is not. How can I forget this? Huge news this year. You are the first class to have this opportunity. This is an incredibly big deal. The James Ryan Family Foundation Scholarship is going to be an annual award that's awarded to one eighth grader per year, um, open to STEM Academy and Comstock Middle School students with a 2.5 GPA or higher. If you do not know your GPA, I encourage you to go find your principal at school tomorrow and ask them, how can I access my GPA? If they tell, tell you that you have a 2.5 GPA, then you need to go home and you need to open these links and you need to review the criteria. This scholarship is a $40,000 scholarship. For the students who are awarded, they will receive $10,000 per year, they're in high school, that they'll be able to take with them to college. $40,000. That is about 
70% of tuition at a place like Western Michigan University. This is a, a huge investment that the uh, foundation folks have, have brought to our community. It is something that they are excited to sustain year after year, and we want to make sure that this inaugural class has a ton of great applicants that they, uh, that they have to make a tough decision on. So again, if you know your GPA, you're over a 2.5, this application is a can't miss. If you don't know your GPA, find out tomorrow and then repeat what I just said. The due date is April 21st. It is coming up. It is an extensive application. It certainly cannot wait till the week of that it's due. There are letters of recommendation. There are essays. There are uh, references. There are a lot of different components that will take some time. But if you can show me a, a, a way to earn $40,000 in about five hours of work, I question if it's legal. So make sure that you're taking advantage of this opportunity. Now, I think that that's what we get. What, what does it mean that it, it's need, need and merit-based? Yeah, need and merit-based. So merit means uh, it's based off of the body of work you've put together so far, your GPA, your leadership qualities, the things you're involved in, um, who you are as an individual. Need-based is financial need-based. So there's some financial need questions that go into that. It will ask you some, uh, uh, some, some, some specific questions regarding um, your family's financial situation. Um, know that that is not to be intrusive. Know that that will be a very normal part of the financial aid process when you do apply to college. The FAFSA is a form that uh, we fill out every single year with students. And it seems like really, really personal information. I promise you it's a normal aspect of the financial aid process. And um, if you meet the requirements that are, are stated within this, just know that not only are you eligible for this scholarship, but you're eligible for a ton of need-based grants. The state of Michigan is investing heavily right now in college affordability. I will not lie to you, the cost of college is nearly <coughs> criminal, but there are ways to pay for it. That's why I'm here. Um, that's what I help students with each and every day. I know that there are a ton of opportunities to pay for college. This is only one of them. I will pass it off to Ms. Colleen Bruder next. We did a food drive, but we um, our event right now is 
we are actually doing one for, it's called a leadership, um, a space of their leadership charity. What we're doing right now is we're trying to lower the cost for kids in our school so that they can attend more things. One of those activities is prom. We do things outside, we've raised so much money for charities, but we do things, this year we decided just to help our community, and so we're trying to lower the cost for prom so that more people can attend. Um, we do tutoring with our elementary kids. Um, they just do a ton of volunteer service. We meet twice a week. Again, that doesn't happen until junior or senior year, but if that's something you're interested in, great opportunity just to meet new people and get involved. I believe the next slide is the Lighthouse team. I am also the student Lighthouse team advisor. Um, this is something this year, we I don't know how many years we've been doing this. Um, it's, we've been doing it quite a few years, and each year builds and builds. This year, my student Lighthouse team, we have 31 students. It's the biggest group that I have. They are also, so far, really one of the most awesome groups I have. This class that we run, seventh hour, is led completely by students. I have two student leaders that run our class. Um, our students write curriculum and do activities for the whole entire seventh hour. We have a spirit committee that runs homecoming and snowcoming. So they get to do all the spirit week events. They get to do all the crowning of the king and queen. They get to do pep assemblies. Um, we have an environment group. Right now our environment group is doing murals. There's 11 kids that signed up to do campus murals for our school based off of what they think leadership is. Um, and so they work on beautifying our school. And then we have a hands-on committee that if you go into our school, they do usually our bulletin boards. They do a lot of acti activities. Um, we've done some cahoots. We do, tons of, we do tons of leadership stuff in there, but the most important thing is it's just student-led. It's students' ideas, it's student voice. This is something that ninth through 12th graders um, can join. We will, starting the second semester, we are gonna take new applicants this in the fourth quarter, so we'll be going to STEM and to the middle school to try to recruit students. Out of the 31 students, I believe I have 11 seniors, um, and that group changes every year. I have all different kids, but if you don't know where to get involved and you decide you wanna get involved, that's a great opportunity to do it. Student Lighthouse is, like I said, called Student Voice and just doing things to improve and make our school more positive. Okay, we're gonna talk about Key Club for a minute. I'm not, you are. You can stay if you want. I'll stay. Hi, um, I'm Daryl, I am um, Rama. I am the, um, uh, the uh, Key Club coordinator with the local Qantas Club. Qantas is an international organization. Um, that uh, does sponsor uh, organizations at school. Here in high school, you'll be able to join Key Club next year, and we are interested in service, and volunteering, um, and helping in the community. Uh, wherever the help may be, we are there to help. So uh, that will be available to you next, next year, um, and I hope to see uh, all of you in Key Club next year. We don't make keys. Um, they, they this big key club because you're the key to the organization. You're the key to the next step of people who are here to help everyone. So thank you all. Just to reiterate, key club is for ninth and tenth grade. It works really well. We do a lot of similar things in NHS that they do in key club. They've done a lot of bake sales. They've done raised a lot of money. It's been very very cool this year. Right, and, and which NHS is only available at 11, 12. Yes. So give so you a chance to get involved right away. All four years. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, I'm going to talk about a few other clubs, um, and then, Chris, are you going to talk about band? Are you talking? Okay, I'll talk first, and you can come up here. How about that? Okay. All right, well, while um, our band director is coming down, I'm just going to mention some of the other clubs that we run. Um, some of them on here, like we did not have ski club. We did have some kids who got ski passes this year, but we have Science Olympiad. Um, Mrs. Osborne runs that. Very awesome. Actually, probably the most students that have been involved this year. That's a really cool opportunity. They do lots of competitions. We have GSA, raise your hands up there. This is one of our most fun and active clubs up here, and they are always happy, so I love them. If you're involved in anything like that, and they'll be outside to talk to you guys if anybody has any um, questions for them. Um, we have, in seventh hour, we also have a club day. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about that, but we have a club day um, where different, um, all teachers host a different club. It could be a cooking club, it could be auto club. It could, there's, there's multiple different clubs they change every year. This is something that students really, really like. Um, they get, the students choose what clubs they have and then they just get to travel. We actually switched our club day to Wednesdays. Um, they liked it so much we made it from Fridays to Wednesdays because we do miss a lot more Friday schools or fr Fridays than, than Wednesdays. But that is another opportunity for you to use your voice, find things you like. Um, knitting, anything, anything you want to do, um, we can put it to club, or put it on that club day. Sure. Uh, if you haven't met me yet, I'm Chris Berg. I'm the band director here in the district. Uh, I'm in uh, the three buildings that are represented here today: middle school, STEM, and high school. Uh, students that uh, join band typically join middle school, but if it's something that you missed out on and you'd like to join, 
starting to ramp those things back up. Cool opportunities in the band class. Uh, contact me if you are interested in joining. What's the pep band? Uh, pep band. As soon as we uh, build up a little bit more numbers, that would be a situation where we perform at a volleyball or a basketball game uh, prior, during the warm-up time or at halftime. Yeah, just more school spirit. All right. Ms. Tachura is going to come down. She's more to give you more details about our awesome choir. Hi, I'm Beth Stachura. I'm the choir director here in Kamstadt. We at the high school level have a couple of different choir offerings. We have um, concert choir, which is three-part um, music, um, mixed both um, men and women in the concert choir. And we have um, a show choir, which is not just singing, but also um, choreography as well. And so we do more advanced music here at the high school than we have at the middle school level um, with more voice parts, um, a little bit of tougher music up here, and more performance opportunities. So we have um, a fall concert here, a holiday concert, uh, spring. We also have um, a holiday tour where we go around the district and perform for some of the younger students in our district, as well as going to Gorgeous Gardens nursing homes to kind of bring some holiday cheer um, at that time. And then also we perform at graduation. Um, so a lot more performance opportunities here at the high school. And um, choir can earn you your arts credit, which is something you need to graduate. So choir earns <coughs> you each year one credit. And so that is something that can fulfill one of those graduation requirements. Okay, athletics, another great way to get involved. How many of you already play sports? Okay, we saw more hands <coughs> there we go. Okay. We offer uh, sports each, you know, fall, winter, and spring. Um, actually, I would rather have students come talk about clubs up here, but a lot of, most of our students that are in these clubs, they are also at sports right now. And because of the weather, they're all trying to find time in the gym. Okay, but we have lots of, um, we have lots of opportunities to play sports. Um, it is proven that when you get more involved in your school that it raises your GPA, and you get to know more people, and it's just a better experience. There's a link to the website. school 